Matt, this is Jason, and why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here. My name's uh, Jason Doyle, I work for Central Services, which is a city and schools maintenance um, project coordinator, and uh, I had a large part to do with, I like to think, of the solar panels on the roof here at JFK. And how long have you been doing this here? Uh, seven years I've been employed with the city. Um, we get into project management more or less the past couple of few years. All right, what interested you to get into this field of work? Uh, I kind of started as a electrician's apprentice and uh, got into HVAC and uh, from there building management. And so I'm kind of just going with the flow really, I suppose. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Today what we have is uh, 33 panels uh, consist of solar array. Uh, it's a 9.9 .9, uh, kilowatt system which is about the biggest system we could put in for the money available. And uh, pretty much create DC power and uh, convert to AC power back into the grid. So how does it work exactly? Tell us, because some of us don't know much about solar energy. Mm -hmm. uh, Another word for the solar panels would be uh, photovoltaic. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much take the photons from the sun's energy into a silicone-based uh, panel. Uh, you then create, without getting too crazy, uh, excess electron, therefore you got current flow in the form of direct current uh, proceeds down a wire into what they call an inverter the inverter that converts the DC voltage over to alternating current which is what we use here and that therefore feeds back into the grid uh, we meter it so we know how much we're generating and uh, we get a credit for that. Are there many schools in the area that have this sort of thing? And this, this is definitely the largest. We have some panels up at the uh, Northampton High School as well. Um, those are more or less tied into science projects. And to be honest, kind of when they turn the building over from the renovation, uh, they almost got overlooked somewhat. And uh, they're not too functional. But uh, that's another step we're looking at doing is getting those back into where everyone knows what they're doing, how they're operating. And why did people even think to do especially. this? Save some energy. Um, so you've been using combustible fuels. And uh, just the technology, you know, it's steadily growing. And uh, it's kind of in the early paces, really. Uh, they're looking at doing some pretty big things with it. So staying on board with that and keeping up with it. And how much of the school is it used for? What percentage would you say? It's about 1% of the school, mm -hmm. um, total annually. Uh, I figure maybe eight classrooms. Mm -hmm. so how much money do you think you save by having it here? That's hard to put a number on. Um, in our reality, maybe five thousand a year, mm -hmm. depending on you know what the going rate is for electricity, which is it's been up there lately. So. Right. Yeah, what you're looking at is pretty much you got your uh, DC power coming down from the roof. Uh, that goes in a cutoff switch. Uh, your DC power goes into these two inverters. This one creates it over to AC power, uh, which we use. Uh, feeds back. You meter it and then back into the grid and uh, we get a rebate for what we're generating ourselves. About a $94,000 project yeah. for the install alone. And then you add another $6,000 for engineering. You know, you get up there in money. And it was all funded, a majority of it, about half of it was funded through CEC money, which is a clean energy choice, which is the residents of Northampton choose to pay a little more on their utilities. And therefore, we accumulate that. And uh, we formed kind of a little committee what to do with the money, and someone came up with the idea for uh, solar panels. Uh, the second half of the money, about $50,000, was through a government grant through uh, Massachusetts Technology Collaborative, which is uh, so we're working on securing that now. That's kind of how it came about, really. You know, the money was there, it's a good idea. Yeah. So we went ahead and did it. So this encourages us to contribute to that fund as taxpayers. It should, and it's not the only thing you do is put solar panels somewhere. You know, there's, you know, geothermal systems are starting to come into their age. Um, also, you know, with funding, I think recently they started talking about getting an energy officer for the city, which was a previous position, but due to budgetary constraints, they hadn't filled, you know, for years now. And now that we got some extra money, we're looking at maybe hiring a guy part time to. You know, keep everything moving in the direction we want to go. And I understand that the new senior center is going to be uh, 
an alternative energy source as well. Yeah, they got a geothermal uh, pumping system. Yeah, uh, eliminates the need for a, a gas-fired oil uh, boiler altogether. Wow, so it's great. Yeah. So we're on the roof here now, where the uh, solar panels are, and uh, can you just tell us a little bit about how it was, you know, built and how it's set up and everything? Sure. Uh, essentially what it consists of is it's uh, 33 panels. Uh, they're all about 300 watts a piece but our system, our 10 kilowatt system. Um, it's a ballasted system, which means it's not actually fastened to the roof. Uh, they're all linked together and kind of their own weight holds it down. Um, they're not quite at a perfectly optimal angle, but it's the best we can get away with with the wind loading and things of that sort. Um, at the end, we have a data acquisition system, which monitors, you know, wind speed, uh, sun intensity, things of that sort, and uh, routes it down to a little box that interprets the data, and we look at that as well. Now, I noticed with solar panels, they're usually set up like, you know, rows like this. Is there a difference between th doing that or having, you know, one huge one on the roof? I think it's just a, uh, the way they make them. You know, it's more cost effective to build them in this arrangement and kind of connect them opposed to building, you know, and transporting and all those type of things. So, yeah, I mean, they're stationary. They don't move. Um, ideally, you know, granted we're facing north and the way the sun rises from the east, you know, they could be a little more optimal, you know, if they're at maybe a 45 degree angle or whatnot, that'd be much better. But like I said, with the wind loading, that's kind of as far as we could get away with it. Um, Do you know if they're if they ever make them so kind of they they move with the sun would that do you think that would be more efficient yeah it would be you know when the application uh, permits that you could do that absolutely um, and this is really you know kind of as good as it gets for the location we have here i